Good morning, everybody. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. Sir, good morning. Let me admit those who are waiting and then I'll stop. Give me a couple of minutes. Yeah. Good morning, Yukma. Good morning, Adik. Madhav, good morning. Good morning, Pante. Good morning, good morning, everybody, good morning. Good morning. Bye, bye. Daira ne Devani Subkamna. Kumkara. Neha good morning. Yeah, good morning. Chalo Aji, good morning. Good morning, Ramili. Okay. I think um, I'm going to wait for a minute. See, people are still trying to join me. Okay. So let's start. Okay, we talked about Barry, we talked about the questions, and we talked about this types of input, and we wanted to talk about what's, what kind of influences do we have on our personal level. <clears throat> Whether we agree or not, all of us have these six or seven elements that shapes our personality. The influences on us from childhood to adulthood is enormous. We are some of what we have experienced. Whatever your personality is, whatever your attitudes are, whatever your views are, whoever you are and where you are, you are shaped by the society. The society in which we live. Now, one has to imagine from the point of view of Mowgli. You? Everybody must be familiar with Mowgli, right? So Mowgli was in a jungle situation with no human interactions. He interacted with nature. And so his personality is quite different from human beings. He talks to animals. Unlike us, we talk to human beings. His values, his beliefs, his experiences are shaped by the life he has lived in jungle. When Balu says to him that why don't you go to human society where your kind of people live in, he is not able to get that idea. What does it mean to live with human beings. He identifies that his physical structure is different from those of animals or people or, or the creatures living in jungle. He is raised up with wolves. His attitudes are different. His values are different compared to human beings. Now consider that example Mowgli's example and the kind of personality that he is, we also live in the same kind of situation. The only situation different is that we have been raised by our families, near and dear ones. We have been shaped by the family values, the school values, the societal experiences that we all have. 
some of you would be having different values than others and that's absolutely fine because not all of us are raised in the same way so what we see is entirely different from what others see those who live in surat would see the world differently than those who live in Ahmedabad. Those who live in quiet open places like farms, fields, where the human population is less congested, they will see the world differently than those who live in very crowded places. Their values would be different their beliefs would be different. Their life educational experiences would be different. We all will have different prejudices against different things. Our feelings would be different because the environment in which we have been brought up would be astoundingly different. And this difference, individual differences, shapes our unique identity with which we communicate with the rest of the world. I don't know how much interaction you do among yourselves because we don't have a situation to meet face to face. And therefore, the restriction within the classroom interaction do not, perhaps, do not allow you to interact with your classmates. And therefore, you may identify what are those, what are those beliefs, differences are there through WhatsApp posts, the kind of work you see an individual is posting on social media. If you are interacting, you would come to know that how their values and belief system are different than yours. If you are able to identify differences and respect those differences, you would create an understanding on how to pass on, how to give input, to the person. What do I mean to say? You learn to give communication an individualized approach. Aapko pata hai ki mujhe is ladke se ya is ladki se isi tarah se baat karni padegi. Otherwise, she is not going to accept. She, he is not going to accept. No bullshit with this person. He likes straightforward thing. This is what we need to understand outside the college as well. A basic example is that your father communicates differently than your mother. The differences exist among us. And these are the reasons on your screen. And we have to value them. We have to understand them. Without understanding these values, you will not be able to communicate effectively with each one of them. We have seen this. Why? Because each of this input is affected through these five senses through creating internal, external state of minds and then reciprocation of the same. We have discussed this yesterday, friends to Barry. And we have to value this. We have to give enough importance to this. You will have enough time to find out how people are different based on this. If you are not able to identify I think you need to open your ears more carefully than others. 
there are prejudices but then that will create problems conflicts past experiences will create conflict uh, belief system will create conflict value systems will create conflict the world in which we live are basically divided into right wing and left wing capitalist and communist communist communal and secular if you try to see the dichotomy the world we live in we have to find out the right balance and how do we do that if we want to communicate these are the value system these are the belief system that we need to understand enough time we have to explore this differences and try to adjust our communication skills in order to become effective in our day to day conversation some people may have a different work ethic than yours you believe in working morally and ethically right the others will say i am more practical understood you do your own way and i'll do my own way there is no team work possibility so you have to find a balance through communication and that's what we try to understand that how we take our work our collaboration to a different level by understanding this stuff so what is this difference between communication and effective communication i think i have given you this example i want water and i want a glass of lukewarm water from the blue jug no other jug suppose i give instruction to somebody like this they will find that's too much i know where to get the water from why this kind of thought emerges in the mind of the listener is the past experience is the value system is the belief that the he or she is having i know what do you mean by blue jug there is no need to point out it might be a different kind of conflict that you see but then i am reminded of uh, Ra rajpal yadav in one of the films uh, where um, amitabh bachchan has his son called uh, this akshay kumar and rajpal yadav is always trying to question remember uh, amitabh bachchan saying pani leke aao and he comes with a balti apnayenge ya piyenge so these kind of things are there in the world and we need to understand that people with different set of mind will have different interpretation of what you are saying i want water i want a glass of lukewarm water from the blue jack i want the report if you don't know what the context is talked about then you need to talk about the context in the same sentence in the same breath i want the report on my table by the end of the day today and the employee will submit the report the earliest will get a treat from my side at the college cafeteria principal is saying that what kind of a report is to be submitted everybody knows but suppose a newcomer does not know the context i want the attendance report submitted by the end of the day today see when you say i want people may not know what do you want so you have to get it clarified in the same sentence which you are going to utter make clear things for people so that they spend less amount of time to interpret and if people start interpreting remember rats wali other the situation may be comical or maybe tragic do not allow any assumptions to 
take place between communication between sender and the receiver. Because the assumption is going to kill the message. Somebody raise the hand. If it is by mistake, I'll take it granted. Otherwise, you can speak. Okay. Let me cite a very interesting example. One of my friends in um, almost 14, 15 years ago, he told his father that he wants to purchase a house. Now see the assumption. He wants to purchase the house. And the father said, that we don't have money to invest at this time. The father assumed that the son is asking for money and son never clarified. So my friend, even today, regrets that he did not buy a house on his own, which was just 300,000 rupees even less than 300,000 rupees. The cost is today, as we speak, is around 45 lakhs. So the assumption, if you leave the assumption to the recipient, the problems are going to occur. So what we need to do all the time is to kill the assumption that somebody is going to interpret the message for you. And that is the difference between communication and effective communication. Any questions so far? Okay. So we have elements of communication. Linguistics, that is para, uh, sorry, paralinguist, your tone, your body language, and the words. If you see and combine the paralinguistic as well as non verbal aspect of your language, that is body language and tone of voice, it's more than 75%. Whereas your verbal, the language that we use is less than combined combination of both of them. So we communicate more or less with body language and the kind of tone we employ. Those who are in poetry, those who are in literature, they know that words have no value as such. The context in which it is used, the way it is used, the kind of gestures that you use, the words make your communication effective. Imagine everything you said in anger with, you, with, with, your, with, your, um, with your pointed finger at somebody. Everything is uh, useless. Whatever good things you have said. Whatever you have said in a sad tone with less energy in it, people are not going to buy it. How it is said, you see, uh, these words, how they are used in the tone and with the kind of body language will make a lot of sense. That will be the weight of the message. See, um, 
you can speak this sentence how many different ways one two three four five six seven seven different ways you can speak the same sentence and each time the sentence has a different meaning in the first sentence it says that it is not i In the second sentence, it says it's not in the tense. It is not in the past tense. The third sentence says it is not say, maybe argued, maybe alleged. In the fourth sentence, it is the he which is at the center of the sentence, the focus of the sentence. In the fifth sentence, the borrowing is at the sentence. It's not borrowing. He took the book he stole the book it's not borrowing he may have purchased it he may have got it on loan but not borrow it's not mine yeah remember see each time you see a highlighted word the word changes its meaning so this is the tone of the sentence. Where do you put stress? How do you emphasize the information? And if you can figure it out, that where does the source of the information is being emphasized by the speaker, you will be able to communicate well with getting the right kind of meaning out of the conversation. Some people um, do not speak truth. And some people are really good at judging, identifying whether the person is speaking truth or not. How do they do that? They have the sense of ability to listen to the stress of the word in a sentence, stress on the word. This is paralinguistics. You have ability to listen to the stress, which word is emphasized. Because it's bold, you can identify. But if it is spoken, how would you identify? You have to train your ears to do that. Not difficult task though. It requires training. When you listen to a film, I'm saying listening, okay, not watching. When you listen to a film, you will be able to get this very quickly. When you listen to a song, you will get this quickly. When you are listening to a radio program, you will listen it very carefully. I am not saying that you listen to a lecture. Because in lecture, there are many places where the person is going to put emphasis. But in radio program, in news program, in films, that would be interesting. Lectures are boring. You don't get this easily. Not all the lecturers can do this. But if you are trained, you will find the source emphasized in a sentence. So how do you listen? So that you get which is the important part in a sentence. What the message is being conveyed. In written communication, it might be difficult, but in spoken communication, this is the most must thing that you must train yourself. I didn't say he borrowed my book, you know, my book. I didn't say he borrowed 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 my book. Each time, if you are not able to do this, take a screenshot, do this practice. Even in Gujarati, you can do this. Even in Hindi, you can do this. 
Each language, though different, with different structure, with different grammar, with different kinds of tones, you still are able to understand which part of the sentence is emphasized. This will help you to understand the message which is garbed, camouflaged, which is hidden. You have one minute. Tell me what words do come to your mind? As many as you can answer on WhatsApp. You can use your checkbox. One minute. In my watch, it's 30. When it's 32, I'll stop. What does this word give you the meaning? What kind of words do you feel, imagine? What comes to your mind when you hear this word? Got only two responses. Three, four. Five, six. One more minute. Yeah, that's it. Only one word. Yeah, that's good. If you can relate more than one word. That's interesting, I'm sure. That's really interesting. Right, right, Pankti. Good, good Saurabh, Priksha, nice. Okay, now, uh, if anybody is still attempting, I'm giving you half a minute because this is going to be very interesting. What I'm doing next, right? Whichever word or whichever responses you have written, put it on a paper and don't show it to anybody now. This is what I asked you to do, right? I asked you to write house, but see this and imagine what kind of words come to your mind, right? Each of you have given me a different version. Now think about this. See, the word was similar to everybody. It was the same concept. But the way all of you have seen is absolutely different. Now, if the differences are there on such a simple concept that we experience day in and day out, you can imagine what kind of complex concepts we are trying to explain to each other. If a house can be interpreted with multiple meanings, with the value, beliefs, experiences, prejudices, feelings, and the environment that we are shaped by, we have to respect others. If I say that when it comes to home, I get stress, you can imagine what kind of environment the person is going, is, is going undergoing. You, almost everybody has said that it's a safe place. But those who have been the victim of domestic violence, 
sexual harassment, what kind of house they are thinking about. So what I'm trying to bring to you is that, that we all are working differently and we need to understand the emphasis that we put on a particular image, a kind of thought that is recurrent in our mind is always coming up. I don't want to take a name of a person who said that when I'm thinking of a house, it comes loan papers in my mind. You can see the financial burden might be there. We don't know and we don't want to get that discussion because it is going to disturb. We have to understand and value. Okay, house is online classes, right? So see the versions of our life is entirely different than others. In fact, in face-to-face -face classes, I used to draw this on, uh, uh, on the white and the black board and the students are supposed to write as many words as possible as they can see based on the picture. The internal memory, the experience, their values changes the picture itself. I used to draw a house with a chimney, not, not a house, a structure with a chimney where there is a gate, uh, where there is a window and an open door. So people would identify it, not it as a home, not it as a house, but as factory, kitchen, outhouse, servant's quarter, hospital, building, unknown building, a safe house, like in James Bond films, People identify differently. So what we see, the word in front of us has its internal representation in communication. So you can see when I'm using the word house, your mind interprets differently. So how is it possible that we as a sender and a receiver stay on the same page. Is it possible? If such a simple concept is internally different in our mindset, words in that sense has no value. The structure, the language has no value. The verbal language has no value at all. What it does say, that our tone, our body language, and our emotions combined together with the language will make communication effective. Imagine again, the same concept, father. The word father itself, We are all blessed to have good fathers, nurturing, caring, compassionate fathers. But imagine a filmy father where the hero is bitten by his father every day. Is he going to use the same kind of words for the, father, for the concept of father that we, you and I are going to use? Mother. We all know how important the concept of mother is. But imagine somebody having a stepmother. She is cruel. Is she going to feel the same way? Why am I taking familiar concepts? Because these will allow us to understand the internal representation and communication, the impressions we have in our mind. Office, the concept office. 
for social workers and journalism students the office is actually field work they use office in two contexts this job and field work that's my office if you talk to me my office my office is college for doctors hospital is his office see how we treat the language differently the images recurrent and we use daily day in and day out they are different and we want to be effective communicator the choice of words are going to make a huge difference when we talk in a classroom with or with the people who are differently trained with different emphasis with different mindsets any questions anybody read this this is i think i have explained this read this the second sentence might surprise you united nations has failed itself on many fronts but this is very interesting statement indigenous people now we need to understand who these are who is indigenous anybody what do you mean by indigenous people any idea you can google i know i don't mind but then i want the critical answer to this who is indigenous people social workers i would like to hear your answers okay anushka very good okay uh, priksha yeah immigrants okay now uh, identify and write down these words on your notepads or your on your mobile notes or wherever you are writing something and try to understand after the lecture what is the difference between the words that we are using immigrants okay very interesting native people of that particular area that means people belonging to a region okay anything else what do you think who are indigenous people local okay jaya good <clears throat> we have less than a minute less than 2 minutes and still people who tries to develop their own native place okay anshu right say these are the concepts that is going to come to your life in one or the other way